Hello, is that uh, Jason? Jason's here. How's it going, Pat? I'm not so bad at all. How are you? Very good. How's uh, how's everything going in uh, in your parts of the the world? Well, <laughs> I think it's like everywhere else, Jason. To be honest with you, you know, it's a, a slow recovery with the pandemic and everything else. But we're we're faring okay. Well, that's good. At McManus, how's it going? You know, with you know rock and roll and you know the the guitars and violins and everything now and your new album. I try to have a new album called Full Service Resumed. Uh, no pun intended, but that was uh, a, a little uh, ode to the, the current situation that we're in. You know, so I found myself with time on my hands due to the lockdown. So. In, in, in that period of time I, I decided to record a new album so uh, Poor Service Resume is a product of that uh, endeavour should I say <laughs> and you know with the title like that I mean the people will look at it and say this is pretty um, interesting we we've, haven't seen a title like that Full Service Resumed before for a band <laughs> yeah well you know we uh, as a band we, we, we tour quite a lot, you know, and, and uh, it, it, uh, it was uh, intended to be that we're back in business again. So slowly things are opening up again, you know. So, you know, it'll be back to playing, hopefully back to playing live again and in front of real people. I have done uh, a handful of shows in Ireland here and, uh, of course, all socially distanced and stuff like that, but it's just great to be back out doing uh, playing the music and, and playing in front of people again and you know having a sense of some sort of sense of reality and, and trying to make sense of all of this you know so it's great from that point of view and it's, it's good for the people who come along to the shows you know to see so many faces that I know and are friends and uh, who, who enjoy the live concerts it's good to see them getting back out there again so hence the name Full Service Resumed I was letting everybody know that we were ready to hit the road again and play whenever we can. Who's all on the album? Is, um, with the Pardon? production, who's all playing on the album with the production and, and stuff? Actually, just me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I did everything. Due to the to the lockdown, uh, we weren't allowed, you know, we, we weren't allowed to get, to get together in groups. So, so, you know, I had to endeavour upon to do this, this album myself, you know, so I played everything bar the drums, you know, and uh, I, I, I got my drummer in just uh, on a day off that I wasn't there, and he knew the tracks prior to this, because I'd sent them to him via a, a demo, and he emailed them to him, so he went in and laid the stuff down, uh, the drum tracks and the rest I did myself, you know, guitars, bass, vocal, the backing vocals, etc., etc., and of course I did it. Uh, with my engineer who is who is in the band also he's the bass player in the band so the pair of us you know don't don't put our masks on and we snuck into the studio when we shouldn't have been there okay. <laughs> turn the lights down low and hope that no one heard us <laughs> and, uh, so that was the, the that was the result of of of, of that little uh, uh, practice that we did so it, it turned out pretty well in the end you know it wasn't the usual circumstances that we would normally record in but you know it, it just had to. It just had to be that way uh, with the current situation the way it is. You maybe uh, see in the future that if things don't, you know, go to plan, you'll have to record more like this, or is it, you know, just resume like usual, eventually and record uh, uh, the, the I real like way. To, I, I would like. I just. I would like to think that we would be fit to get back to some sort of normality and get back to the way things were. Hopefully, you know, I would. I would hate to think that that was going to be the way it was going to be from now on. I don't think it will. I think eventually, you know, this thing will. We we will beat this thing with with the vaccines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, we we'll get back to doing, uh, you know, sort of nor some kind of normality. Pretty soon, I would hate to think that that was going to be the way it was going to be from now on. But you know, it was just. I don't know how strict it was with you over there, but it was very strict here, you know. Okay. And it's still quite strict, you know. There's still a lot of, of, of rules and regulations, so it was just abiding by the rules and sticking by the rules, and you know, having respect for everybody else as well. That's why we did it that way, you know. We didn't want to involve many people, you know, because we were just scared of, you know, coming into contact with people and maybe, you know, if one did have a, mm -hmm. uh, a symptom, that they pass it on. So, you know, it was just it was better to take precautions and do it that way as opposed to getting the whole band in the studio at the same time and and do it the way we would normally do it, you know. So it it, it, it 
found out okay in the end, you know. And Pat, let's say for playing um, on online, let's say there's a lot of people that do collaborations with other people, you know, via Zoom or I don't know. Have you co collaborated with anybody, you know, on on the internet? Well, not not really. I did a, a lot of live streams. Uh, uh, you know, I did them every two weeks, uh, every Thursday uh, for for the best part of nine months, really. You know, so I did that, and I also did. Yes, I did a couple of things with uh, a couple of members from uh, Roy Gallagher. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's right. a very famous guitar player. Uh, I did with his bass player Jerry McAvoy. Jerry, we did a couple of little things together with other musicians as well, and uh, it was really Jerry's project. And he he asked me if I would do some stuff. So. We did a couple of little things like that there, but nothing too serious, to be quite honest with you. you know, Jerry was about the only one that I did it for, you know, so, and I was thrilled to do that because it was, you know, he was such a legend in his own right, and along with playing bass for so many years with Rory, you know, it was it was a great privilege and honor to do it with him, you know. So, apart from that, that was about it, really. Okay. Pat, let's say, you know, since the Mama's Boys days, you know, with touring and stuff like that, do you find, like, before COVID-19, touring has changed Regardless, you know, it, it is a little bit different than it was back in the day and and life has changed and we have internet now and how, What's your take on this, you know, when arriving well, at the uh, venue? Yes, it has changed quite a bit, you know, considerably uh, different, you know, I mean, let, let, let's face it, I think uh, uh, musicians in general sort of uh, go long distances now, whereas they would have had to had you know, a record company back in with the, with that to bring. You don't need all that stuff now with PAs and backlines. You can you can bring a very limited amount of guitars, and and it's difficult to fly around because it's so expensive. So you kind of cut costs from that point of view. It's 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 everything it is because everything has been miniaturized now. You know, right. you can carry great amplifiers now, and you can carry them on as hand luggage with with various little uh, lunch bo box uh, amps and stuff like that. There, so it's easy. It's it, it's very it's easy to get around, and it it it, it, it it's um, a lot easier than it was when we were touring, say, like when we were touring in Canada and stuff like that. There, where you would have to have a whole entourage on the road with you, you know, to to get to get things up and running. So you know, it has changed from that aspect of it, you know. And uh, to be honest with you, I also think you know uh, the the music industry uh, uh, as far as the the sort of rock music goes has, has become a, a lot more of apart from the big metal acts you know of, you know if you're a blues rock act like me it's become more of a cottage industry so you're you're you're, 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 you're kind of self-financing yourself and you're looking after yourself as opposed to having management and stuff like that there we don't really do that anymore uh, we, we we kind of my, my wife and i she manages the band and she she looks after that, that that end of things. So we keep it all in house, and it's more like a little. For me, it's more like a cottage industry, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't mean, you know, uh, with the advent of of, um, of the internet, we're fit to reach people and talk to people and tell people when we're going on tour. And you know, from all over the world, here, particularly in Europe, we haven't really ventured into Canada or America. But uh, uh, we're quite pretty busy in Europe, you know, so we can always let them know in advance when we're coming on tour and stuff like that. So, you know, from that point of view, it's it's, set, it's much more self-contained now, whereas you would have needed, you know, uh, a massive backing from uh, management and, and big record companies and booking agents and all that. You can, you can more or less do it yourself now, and if you build up a following, and I'm lucky, you know, I've had a, a bit of interest there from my years with, with working with my brothers uh, in the Mama's Boys, so, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it, you have, I have a history, let's put it that way, mm -hmm. so people go, oh, yes, I remember that band, and, you know, one thing leads to another, and you, you get promoters who just uh, ring in myself, or my manager Sally here, you know, uh, to, uh, to confirm bookings and to ask the band out on tour, so, you know, it, 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 it has become quite different from, from the days of, of, let's say, the big uh, the corporate record companies, you know, who sort of rule the roost, you know, they don't have that kind of strangled hole anymore. So, you know, musicians with the internet have to, have to find their own ways and are in charge of their own uh, careers much more so, you know. They don't have to answer to these people, you know. And sometimes, you know, those people really only seen it in terms of uh, how many p pieces or units they could sell. They weren't really interested in developing the musician as an artist or anything like that there it was you know back in the 
clear it was if you don't sell so many copies that shit you're out you're gone you know right. and that that, ha- that that happened to so many bands you know including myself you know you have to reach a quote and if you don't reach that quota, well then they just pull the rug from under you but this way you know we can keep the way we do it now we can keep working and uh, you know yes the, the audiences would be more uh, would be smaller but the, the point about it is those people who, who come to the gig then buy CDs and merchandise and stuff like that so it really keeps the band rolling along and, and you know still get to have a career so from that point of view it's, it's changed dramatically and Pat let's say going on you know great Irish guitar players have you um, ever been friends with Bernie Torme? Oh, oh indeed I have yes of course <laughs> in fact I played uh, I played just sadly before Bernie passed away I played with him at a couple of festivals one in, in, in Ireland here called uh, the Going to My Hometown which is a, a Rory Gallagher festival which mm. is held every year in commemoration of Rory and also uh, another a couple of festivals in England so I've met Bernie quite a few times I was a, a fan of his anyhow and uh, I'd, I'd met him and we were quite friendly and he he was an awesome, awesome guitar player, and it was a, you know, it was so sad to, to hear that he had passed away, you know, because I'd only seen him like six months prior to that, you know, and it was, I, I was shocked and disbelief, you know, that that I couldn't believe it because we were we were chatting and, and, and sharing a joke uh, at the Rory Festival, and I said I'll see you for, somewhere down the rocky road, and we were laughing, you know, and then this happened to him, you know, so it, that came as, a, as as quite a shock to me that you know that that he had passed so suddenly. Yes, I've, I've shared the stage with quite a few of the great Irish guitar players, including Gary Moore. Uh, uh, in fact, I spoke to Gary not long before he actually uh, sadly passed away as well. I know this sounds rather morbid, but it, 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 I'd actually had a conversation. He actually he was in Ireland. He actually rang the house and I spoke to him for a couple of minutes. You know, we were talking about his latest album, you know, and stuff like that. There, and uh, you know, he, he seemed in good form, and it was just you know, it was just an honour for me to. Yeah, it's, there's some incredible guitar players that you know come from Ireland, and it's it's not a big place, and to to know that there's such great big legends that you know come from there, it's incredible. Well, it is, you know. I mean, I think <clears throat> you know it 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 stems back to you know the, the music in Ireland in general. You know, it, it, music is still very much alive and and. It, it goes back to the days of, of, the, of the, the traditional folk music. Everybody got together to play for the for the for the love of playing music, not to to score material gains or to become famous. I think just people got together just to jam and to, to play and to put a smile on people's faces, and that that still carries through to this day. So I, I think in many respects that's where that whole thing came out of. You had people like Eric Bell, of course, from Thin Lizzy, you know, a giant of a guitar player as well. You know. Play, People don't met when they talk about Gary. They forget about uh, uh, Eric, and Eric was such a, a vital part of, of um, you know, the thing that he said. Without Eric, it would have never happened in the first place, you know. And he's still going strong to this day, and a wonderful player, you know. And so, it, it, you know, there was many, many great players came out of uh, uh, out of Ireland, you know, uh, great giant guitar players, you know. So, and uh, so it's it, it been it's been you know great for me. It was a great. You know, these people used to ask me, you know, oh, who are your favorite guitar players? And I would say they're all Irish, you know, Eric Bell, Roy Gallagher, Gary Moore, you know, the Edge, they're, all, they're just all awesome players, you know. So it, 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 it was a great breeding ground for great players, innovative players. I mean, when you go to a local music store, is every guitar player the same place at the same time? <laughs> happen it's more like at the gigs you know we, 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 we all kind of meet up more at the gigs you know I mean I come from a very uh, provincial part of Ireland there's not many guitar stores around where we are you know I live out in the countryside so you know Belfast would be the nearest you know and that's that's a hundred miles away from okay. me you know so so it's quite a long and Dublin's the same Dublin's about a hundred miles away I'm sort of northwest of, of Ireland not far actually from where Rory was actually born you know so it's pretty remote where we are so to meet up with like-minded the only time we really meet up is uh, if we're doing little festivals and stuff that, throughout Ireland and we, we have a, a meet up then you know and sometimes we have a little jam then you know but it, it, we don't get together that often just because it's it's pretty remote here you know but but 
Right. <laughs> Pat, let's say, you know, returning on the full service resumed album and um, just get a little glimpse of how long it took you to, to make this and, you know, from the mixing to, to mastering it, you know, how, how was oh, the production? Okay. About 10 days, really. Okay. You know, it was really quick. I, I, I didn't, you know, what I do normally personally is I, 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 I have a little small demo set up, very antiquated a little set up at home here. And I like it that way because, uh, you know, I can get my ideas down and I get the rough songs down the way I want them. And then I take them, I have them pretty well rehearsed before I go in. And uh, of course, when we get into the studio, then sonically it sounds different and it changes and the, the quality of the sounds are better. You know, I just really get the ideas down and the songs ideas down. And once I've done that, then I, I set about actually recording them properly. But that process is pretty damn quick, you know, because I don't like to dwell on it too long because I think the longer you sort of dwell on, on, on the stuff like that, the more you pick holes in it and you kind of lose yourself uh, right. and you kind of lose what it really started out as. So I kind of go bang, 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 that's done, that's it, that's what it is, take it or leave it, you know. So, you know, as long as I'm quite happy myself, then, you no, know, you could you could, you could could refine those things till you've refined everything out of it, you know, so the spontaneity and the excitement and the energy that originally got you excited about the idea you had has as, as gone. So I try to try and do it as quickly as I possibly can to, to keep those energy levels in it, if, if you can understand what I, what oh, yeah. I mean by that. But you know, yeah, you know, so I don't want to lose that, that spirit that got me excited in the first place about doing the song or recording the song or writing the song. And I want to try and keep that, that little thing going through it. And I just think if you deliberate too long over it, 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 it you kind of lose track of where it's going and it, it gets bogged down in the te technical side of things then. And, you know, you've lost the spirit of, of, of what it essentially was about in the first place. That's very well said because there's a lot of people that spend way too much time, you know, on uh, one song and then it just disappears into something that ain't yeah, even what it was know, made to be. Part of it all is people don't, yeah, I totally agree with you, this, you know, and people don't realize, you know, the, the people that go out and buy that stuff, and buy, your, buy the stuff, they don't realize, you know, that you've spent so long doing it. And, what, 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 you know, they either like it or they don't like it, you know, and they're not going to go, well, oh, I don't like that song, and you go, why? Because I don't like the bass drum on it. <laughs> you, you know, they're not going to say that, they either like the song or they don't, you know. So you can spend as much time as you want doing refining it, you know, but to the, the, the guy in the street, he either likes the song or he doesn't like it. It's as simple as that, you know. And no amount of production will change that. Right. That's that how I feel about it personally, you know. No, That's I how I feel. I mean, I, I think it became very competitive, uh, particularly around the time that, you know, to have this absolute perfection. But music's not perfect, you know. It never was meant to be, you know. It, it, it should be more of, of, a, of, of being caught in the moment and, and trying to capture that moment as opposed to doing it over and over and over again where the song becomes so boring to, that, that you don't know feeling left in it to play it to it, you know. It should be exciting. It should still give you a buzz while you're playing it. And if you, if you can manage to get that recorded, well, then you're winning, you know. Totally agree with you. <clears throat> Pat, I appreciate you taking the time with me. And uh, hopefully this Thank album... Thank you very much, Jason. Yeah. I really appreciate you and thank you very much for this. I, I really appreciate that. Oh, awesome. And uh, Pat, you know, McManus, the product sounds great. And just keep on doing some good stuff. Thank you so much, Jason. God bless and take care. You as well. Bye. God bless. Bye. God Bye. Bless.